All right, friends, welcome back to Jason Design Shop, where today we're going to make a boomerang out of this 3H birch piece of plywood. Uh, it's pretty easy, it turns out, so let's give it a shot. All right, here we are with our 3 8 inch plywood. We've got a straight edge. You'll need a, a right angle. And, boy, I've got this old one from my grandpa, John Dunn. Look at that. It's from his uh, college drafting days, I believe. All right, so you'll need a compass. This off the side here, and a pencil. So if you want to make this with your kids, it's the perfect type of project to make with your kids. Okay, it's easy. I'm gonna go out 10 inches on the uh, length here. Let's mark that right off of that piece there. 10 inches. Make a line. Bring it back to your corner now. Go out 10 inches on this side. If you have a compass or a writing that doesn't go that far, you can extend it with another ruler up against it. Let's do that. Oh. Right up to there. Right there. All right, I don't know that we need this much more. Get it out of the way. All right, so we have these two lines here. Now, we need to get our compass and set it to one pass, go to three quarter and go one pass. It's like seven eighths, right? Go right to the edge of your board and then go around. There it is. That's how, that's how wide our boomerang is going to be. Oops. Right. You can round this corner if you want to use the this to match those. Spring this back up. Bring your lines in. In here. Alright. And then this way. to the outer mark of that curve. Line it up there. There you go. And then you can also get a curve in this one. Oh, I lost it. There you go. Here we got the boomerang drawn out. Now we can cut it out uh, with a jigsaw. Uh, you can use a corded one or a battery one. This one's got a pretty aggressive blade, so I'm a little concerned about tear out. But don't be too concerned because we're going to be sanding all this, rounding it off anyways. And one side's going to have a big slope to create the uh, effect of it coming back to you. So, and the outer side, well, one of the sides is going to be is already cut so your outside's good it's just the inside so we'll see how it goes if you're noticing you're having really bad tear out right from the beginning you can just cut further out away from the line and then sneak up on it when you're sanding later all right here we go That is loud. Oh, I got a sliver. This plywood does pretty good at holding together and it's and it's strong. You can be able to handle it tumbled. Now cut your corner. That corner here. Does want to split more this way than this side. So hopefully this will be our angled side. We got our shape ready to go. What we want to do now is square up and, and sand all our edges up to the line. I did cut away the line right on the line there. We'll get it there and then I'll show you how to sand the leading edge and explain that part. All 
Well, we sanded the edges. Now we got to figure out the air airfoil concept. It's a plane wing. So if we're going to throw it this way with my right hand, this side has to be creating the vacuum, which, which uh, an airplane wing has it so it can turn to the left. All right. So this will be the leading edge of that throw. So this is the front of the airplane wing. We're just going to round this part over. But this is the back of the airplane wing, so it needs to get thinner from this side because that's where the vacuum, this will be flat, and that's where the air will create a vacuum and suck it to the left. Okay? So we want to sand this at an angle. Most of the uh, lift is created out on the end of this, but you want to go from about the middle here. I'm going to go shut left of middle to, you know, back. I guess you can make an angle back to this point, but we're not going to probably sand it that far. Since most of the work is done out here, if you're a uh, isn't sand all the way back here, it doesn't matter. Now, oops, let me hold it the correct way. So that's sloping away there, and that means as it let go, this becomes the leading edge, and this is my back edge. So you have one outside that's going to be sanded, and one on the inside that'll be sanded. All right, so we're going to go halfway out there, coming back to this corner. Well, I don't know if I need to go there, yeah. I'm going to go back to this corner here. Here I was going to the outside edge here. Okay. So let's get this on the sander and see if we can sand it down. Now that said, as you're sanding, this has three plies. We are only going to take out the two ply and just probably touch on this. We don't want to go any further than that. That'll just make this too fragile. If it tumbles or hits anything, it's going to break the wood there. So if we can keep that whole ply in there, that'd be great. And just sand down at an angle through those two plies. Let's give it a shot. So... We start with this side. We're going to hit it like this at an angle and work it. And keep checking it and working it out to the very end. All right, let's do it. All right, there it is. Holds this way, leading edge creates the vacuum that pulls it this way and the next leading edge comes out and pulls it this way some more. We're thin, you can see where I just started to get the third layer there, ooh, I want to stop because that, now that's really thin there. Same thing here, I got it down but I, I didn't get to the third layer, but there's a chip on this back side so I'm going to be careful. See inside there there's a hole and this is pretty good, there's the whole layer, the third layer just starting to show. Didn't get quite up to my line, but now we need to sand around this nicely and rounded all the way around. I think we can do some of that all on, on this, and then we'll do it with some. Actually, that is pretty rough sandpaper. I'm gonna switch over to this 170 grit, 120. I think this is 120, and we'll sand it up this way. go smooth not going to get any slivers hit that I don't like my little divot maybe I'll just sand that out all right let's hit the inside here now finally your boomerang is a little fragile um, so we're gonna I'd like to stain it to bring out some color just to make it prettier and then I'm gonna throw a little thin layer of polyurethane on there and that will hopefully give it a little bit of a rigid Protection once that really dries out dries out and uh, can protect it when it hits the ground and gets some use All right, let's do it Got some uh, Stain here This is gonna make it golden looking I want to see the pencil marks Ah. All right. Take a dry towel, wipe it off. Now, I would let this dry for a day. 
So let's let that dry. We'll come back, polyurethane it, let that dry. We'll go test it. All right, there's our stained boomerang. Let's put some uh, polyurethane on there, give it a little strength and uh, protection. Okay, let that go. Dry overnight. Maybe tomorrow we can test it. All right, there it is. Beautiful. Let's go take it out. And give it a throw. All right. All right, here we are out the park. Pretty windy day. Okay, we're gonna throw it right into the wind, so hopefully it'll catch it and help it turn around. Here we go. There it goes. Ooh, about a full U shape. Not too bad. Yeah, so it's just a little too windy out here. But this time we're gonna try to do the same thing, but run over there and catch it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Over here, over here. Nope. Far away. <laughs> Definitely flies afar, which is cool. Yeah. Doesn't turn around enough though. Gonna take some refining, I guess. Alright, friends, it didn't quite come back to me. It was so close. I think I'm just gonna round off the front leading edge on both of the uh, top side where the, the slope is and see if that makes a difference. I'll leave a comment and let you know if I ever caught it. So. Stay tuned. Um, if you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, friends. Bye.